five, five. If you please sit in this. Okay. I'll help you. Yo, Tony, thanks. Great, thanks. Okay. First of all, welcome to Finland. Welcome to our show. This will be broca broadcasted in our 10 o'clock news mm. with about one, mil one million people watching you of whom maybe 1% mm. have ever heard about rap music or something like that. Mm. Give them a reason why should they, why should they start listening to oh. rap music? Well, rap music is the fastest changing music. And that's why it grows faster than all the other genres of music, is because the music gets closest to the youth. And the kids get into it a lot faster than the older crowd. And that, that's why the music changes so often, because kids are creative. You know, we go into different zones and different modes of music. But we kind of, it's kind of a mixture of all genres of music. So you might have type of country music where they're rapping, or rock music where they actually rap over rock instrumentals and it's just it's becoming more and more a part of music so that's the reason for them to start listening to absolutely us. eventually they're gonna hear something similar to what we're doing right now on their favorite artist's music so for in order for them to understand it they can kind of get a sneak peek at what it is now at the moment rap is the most popular type of music absolutely why, why? I think it's because of the youth, because of the kids, and it changes really rapidly. A hit record today is is not the same. Tomorrow, the next hit record it may be totally different from what works right now. So it's like you have to kind of reinvent yourself rapidly. Me as an artist, when I came out with Get Rich or Die Trying, I've had to find new ways to express myself over the music since then so many times over you know i gotta repeat you can't stay consistent with one way that you make music like michael jackson had a way that he made hit records and his consistency was there all across the board but we can't this our music doesn't allow us to stay one way stars like you are still quite rare here in e europe mm -hmm. uh does the real rap come from the states well but real rap comes from experiences. Everybody's experiences are different. So there's artists out here, they rap, they're great rappers. You know, I, I'm entertained by what they're saying and the cadences that they choose as, as an artist is different. Your yeah. albums have uh, those uh, potential advisory labels or logos. Uh, what do you think about those? Are those needed? Well, I think you talking about the advisory stickers? Yes. Well, that's necessary because of the lyrical content. You know, I swear in my music, you know, I use vulgar language at some points to express myself. You know, I, I rap about the environment that I come from. You know, and the harsh realities sometimes are too harsh for, you know, kids. So you put the stamp there to advise them not to purchase it. They're not prepared to hear those things. You've seen poverty, you've seen drugs when you were a kid. Uh, what, is, what is your advice for those people living in, in poverty who want to be stars like you? Oh uh, man, work, work at it. You know, what I mean, even if people discourage you with the things that they say about your talent or your music early on, you keep working. You know, because I, I had to go through all of those situations. You know, and there definitely was a point where only I felt like I was a star. You know, and now things are different. You have a kid. Yeah. Uh, he's uh, three, four, five. No, he's seven right he's now. He's seven. Uh, yeah. Is he listening to your music? Absolutely. Uh. Yeah, he listens to it, and I um, explain it to him. You know, like I don't not let him hear it because that does exist. Everything that's in the music is out there, so I kind of prepare him for it by explaining it in a way like he hears it and he's like, I don't allow him to swear, and uh, the kids know what they can do and what they can't do. That's why you'll find them swearing when you're not looking. The adults, they'll swear amongst them, they don't, themselves, other kids, but they don't curse when you, the adults are around. They know when to do it, when not to do it. And if you explain to them that it's the right thing and the wrong things, you know, they're still gonna make the decision whether they're gonna do it or not. 
but not all parents explain all the things to their kids. Yeah. And when they don't explain it, they actually hurt the kid because then they leave the kid to make an assumption. They're on their own. So they'll assume what, what's good, and what's right or wrong based on their own assumptions. So that's why it's rude. Yeah, I mean, for the kids, if you, you actually hurt the kids when you deprive them. That's like a film. You watch Western films. You watch uh, all, all sorts of films that have violence in them. Violence is a large form of entertainment. A lot of our action films, you watch people do things that are life-threatening situations there. He's hanging off a helicopter while he's flying. There's a lot of different action sequences that are life-threatening situations. That's entertaining for us as humans because there's one thing that we all share, and that is as long as we're alive, we have a birthday coming. That's why my hit record, Go Shawty, it's your birthday. A lot of people relate to it. And as humans, we all have in common the fact that we're going to die. You know, so it's interesting to watch those things take place and look really real. L look at how vivid they can make a film look like. You know, in film they can show you a life-threatening situation and you just miss it by the hair. You know what I mean? And it's just like it's entertaining to watch for a second because you know it's impossible to actually experience that yourself. But you have faced violence. You've yeah. been shot. Yeah. Are you still afraid of? being uh, uh, no. uh, terrorists or, or something like nah, that? No, I've been subjected to that all my life. So it's like, if it's always been a part, it a, my mother got killed when I was eight years old. Same type of situation. You know, like, I've experienced these things all my life. So it's like, when I say things, it's really, you know, the things you go through make you who you are. It's really me speaking about my experiences. Last question, back to music. You are playing your gig here in, in a small club. Yeah. Which, is, which, which do you prefer, small clubs or large concert halls? Well, for the most part, I've been in really big concert halls or, or arenas. But um, ahead of that, before I was that popular, we was in small clubs. And I'm comfortable with either or. I think it's a little more intimate when it's, excuse me, when it's that's a smaller venue. The stages are usually smaller. It's like like less work. So tonight it kind of, kind of be like a show practice for an arena. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Okay. It would be for Tommy, T O M I.